In this video, I wanted to show you the basics of the brush tool. There are a lot of tools in the Photoshop tools panel that use the brush tool aside from the brush, like the eraser tool, the smudge and blur tools, the dodge and burn tools, just to name a few. And one of the things that all of these tools have in common is a brush picker. Let's go up to the tool options bar and take a look at that. Now, if you don't see this, remember to go ahead and select the brush tool. Whenever you select a tool, the options for that tool open up in this tool options bar. If you click the disclosure triangle, for this icon, you'll get the brush picker, which allows you to adjust the size of your brush and the hardness of your brush. This is how you adjust the size by dragging the slider back and forth. So if I come over here with a hardness of 100% and an opacity of 100%, which you can also adjust here, notice the character of the line that I just made. It's very hard edged. Let me go into 100% by hitting Command or Control 1. I'll hold the space bar just to move it down a little bit. So with each stroke, it's very hard and crisp, right? Now, if I come back to the brush picker and I pull my hardness all the way down to zero, notice the character of the line. See how soft the edges are? This is really helpful when you're painting on masks and you need a soft, fuzzy edge instead of a crisp edge. Now, you can also vary the size of your brush just by dragging the size up and coming over. So there's a big soft brush and pull this back to 100%. Here's a big hard brush. You see the difference. So those characters are really important to know how they work. Now let's undo all this. Since I haven't saved this image since I opened it, I can just go up to file and back to revert. It will revert the image back to the originally saved version. So there's actually a more efficient way to adjust the size of your brush instead of coming up to this brush picker every time because you have to click out of it to make it disappear. If you just hit the left bracket key, which is beside the letter P on your keyboard, one tap, two tap, three tap, four tap, you see how it's making my brush smaller? And then if I hit the right bracket key, which is just to the right of the left bracket key, it makes my brush bigger. So I can very quickly adjust the size of my brush in increments by using the left and right bracket keys. Let's remove those by just going back to file and revert. So in addition to choosing the size and hardness of your brush, probably the two other most common things you'll use with your brush tools are the opacity, which is here. So again, this is at 100% opacity, right? And actually, let's go ahead and change the color of the brush. There are a lot of ways you can change the color of your brush. Typically, the color is stored in the foreground background swatches right here, with the very top one being the foreground swatch and the back one being the background swatch. But if I come over to my tabs and toggle on color, I can pick a color for my brush from here just by like picking that red. And you see how it changed the foreground color to red here and all the way over here. Another thing I can do is toggle on the swatches. If I have a pre-selected swatch that I like or that I've made or created, and you see as I've selected it here, it loads it and saves it into my foreground over here. If you don't see your color or swatches, you can always go up to window and just put a check mark beside them and it'll bring them to the front for you. Now, with the color selected, see now I, can, I can paint with a color. Now, what if I wanted to change the color of this flower? Manually, really carefully try to paint well, look what's happening. One, I'm not doing a really good job with my edges and it's just coming out as a very flat color of paint. I don't see the texture of the flower itself. This is where you can lower the opacity to maybe help with that. So I'll drag right up here. Okay, here's a quick tip about scrubby sliders and they work on anything that has a variable number that you can change by dragging a slider. Scrubby sliders are much quicker. I can just hover over the word and drag left or right to lower or raise the percentage of the opacity. I'm going to go down to around 50%. Okay, that, that works much better, right? I can see below and I can see my flower, but it, it, it's more of a tint now, though. It still doesn't quite look right. I'm going to drag that back to 100%. Now let me show you the blend modes. These blend modes are the same ones that you can find over here in the layer blend modes, but these are only visible if you have more than one layer. In later videos, I'm going to cover all the differences and nuances of these categories of blend modes that are great for photographers and designers. But for now, for this exercise, I'm just going to choose the color blend mode. I'm at 100% opacity. And I'm just going to come over and start painting. And do you see how this is basically letting me change the color of the flower without changing the luminance values? See on this one where I painted with a lower opacity, see how it made the highlights darker? 
see how I'm retaining all of my highlight and shadow information in proper relationship. So this really gives me the benefit of being able to do a nice job. But again, look how hard it is to paint these edges, especially here. These are kind of blurry edges and these are sharp edges. Let me show you how you would fix this. Again, I haven't saved this image since I've opened it. So I'm just going to go up to File and Revert. I'm going to hold the space bar, raise this up a little bit, and I'm going to jump ahead and show you something with this Quick Selection tool. If you don't see it right away, just hold down the Disclosure Triangle and choose Quick Selection Tool. I'm going to tap my right bracket key to make my, my brush of the Selection Tool bigger. And then I'm just going to paint over the flower. And see how it did a really good job of selecting the flower? The selection is indicated by the marching ants. And I'm going to give you some really detailed videos on all the selection tools, but we're going to cover them in this video series too. So now that I have a quick selection of this flower, I'm going to go back to my brush tool, which I can hit B for brush, or just click it here. I'm going to leave blue in my foreground. I'm going to come over to my swatches panel and choose yellow. See yellow is loaded in my foreground. I'm going to leave the blend mode set to color at 100% opacity. I'm just going to hold the right bracket key down to get a really giant brush really fast. Now watch this. I can just paint over the flower without being careful because the selection is restricting the color to be just in that selection. If I want to change that to a light cyan, if I want to change that to a green, if I want to change that to a red, if I want to change that to a pink, I think I like the red the best. You see how that works and how easily you can change the color of a specific object in a photograph? And then you can go up to select and deselect to get rid of those marching ants, or you can just hit command or control D. There you go. That's a quick way to change the color of an object in Photoshop. If you like this video, make sure you whack it, smack it, and crack a lack it. Yes! Hey, what are you still doing here? It's over. Actually, all kidding aside, I hope this video helped. And if it did, consider subscribing. I like subscribers. That's awesome. What? You just took one in the jugular, man. <laughs> Whoa! Yes! <laughs> god. Oh my god, I did! This is hey, you stayed to the end. You know what that means. You're awesome. I'm talking about you. Now get out of here.